Hello everybody, this is a lovely day in Vienna, Austria. This is also a November MOOC about taking the first step in Tresentes Tosca. I am Trang Le, training consultant, and with me is Max Bauer, our test solution architect, who has worked in many different Tosca projects with various customers. Some of you probably have heard about the housekeeping rules before, but for the newcomers, please allow me to read them out again. There is a control panel at the bottom of your screen. You can restore the windows, hide or show the video player or the Q&A box, as well as looking at the speaker bio. All participants will be muted during the session. However, we do encourage questions. Please use the Q&A box. There will be a Q&A session at the end of the MOOC. Therefore, we will hold the most interesting questions for that part so everyone can profit from the answers. We will try to answer as many questions as possible during the session, but please be aware that only questions related to the current topics will be covered. For everything else, please contact our customer support. Please keep in mind that we might not be able to answer all of your questions during this session, but we will try our best. Lastly, this session will be recorded and will be shared on our website as well as video channels later. And now, let's get to the good part. Here's Max Bauer. Hi guys, warm welcome from me. I'm Max from Tricentis and today I'm showing you the first steps in Tricentis Tosca. Um, um, usually, you know, we are talking about concepts and we go into demonstration and later on we do the discussion. Today we will make it a little bit different. We don't have too much concepts here or we have some concepts, but I will talk you through that within the demonstration and it will be no conceptual slides, no theoretical part. We just do everything within the tool and I just talk to it. All right. Today's agenda will cover following things. We will start with some repository stuff. So we're talking about what is a multi-user repository, what different kinds we have, how to use that, how it will work out. Then we head over to the overall view of Tresantis Tosca. So we'll see what buttons we have there, what they are doing, how the views are look like, and so on. Then we will move to folder structures. So um, what do we... Um, so what would be best practice, what should you do, what should you leave, what would be pro, what would be con. We move on to user management and I think then we are filled for that hour. Um, maybe we have some questions later on, then we just go and walk through them. All right. So we already start with the demonstration. All right. I just head out here out of the presentation and jump right into here. Okay, we're talking about a common repository. What is it? It's a centralized database which every, every Tosk client just pulls and puts data into it. So what we have here is the shared data and every client just picks the actual data from there. Um, we have three different recommended setups for a database. The one would be MS SQL Server, which I have already here. Um, another um, would be a DB2 or an Oracle database. So those are the three preferred types. Um, I think you should fit into one. We don't mind too much if it's in a cluster, if it's a separated one, what else. We, we don't care. Um, I've just set up here a, a MOOC database for today. Um, it's pretty small. It's about 100 megabytes and the log file is the same too. Um, keep in mind to have the log file a little bit bigger than usual because in case of an upgrade you will put in here a dump of the current database just to have it know. Um, and we created here one user. The user is called Tosca. So it's just a simple user with DB owner rights and I just added it to the, to the MOOC that it has the rights there. So what I'm saying here is you just need one user for your database and every Tosca client install will instance will use the same user to connect to it and to take the data there. There's no need for different database users. Um, you can have two different types for the, for the users on the database, so you can have more. But then we recommend to have two types, one with the admin roles like a DB owner role where you can just um, 
do everything with it, like a migration later on, and then you can you can have some kind of Tosca client users which just have the read write rights to to just um, work with the database. All right. So having this in mind, we just go back to the Tosca commander, and here I already um, um, put up the window with creating a new workspace. So this is what you would initially do once you have the installation of Transcendus Tosca, right? So here you can select single user workspace. This is usually during the trainings or once you haven't set up completely, then you're going for the single user workspace. Um, you can start every time with a single user workspace, but I recommend in projects to go for the multi-user as fast as possible. The reason behind it is if you just create a single user workspace and then later on move your subsets um, into the multi-user repository, then you may create doubled modules, doubled test cases, and so on. There is the possibility to migrate those, but I would recommend to just start with one of each and not by migrating all of those together because it's kind of a little bit work to do and we don't want to do that in the beginning. So it's it's easier to just start with a multi-user repository. Therefore, I select here my MSSQL database. And now I have here the scheme and the connection string. Um, a little bit help would be here the question mark. If I just press it, it will display here me a connection string. So if you don't know how it should look like, you just put it in here with the question mark and then you know what to fill. Um, I've already prepared here mine. So um, just to let you know, the server, this is my computer, so it's a local database and SQL Express is just because it's it's the free version of SQL. The database is called MOOC and this is the UID and password for, for the user you've seen before. All right. There is also the possibility to have active directory user. Therefore, you just add here trusted underline connection equals yes. So that would be the string if you have um, if you have an active directory user. All right. I don't have that here. I just wanted to mention it. Okay. For for the branch, you don't have to 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 mind too much. Maybe you have um. The branch and merge setup, then you already know which one you select. For me, it's just master because I don't have more of them. I just try here that the connection is valid. That's good. Then I have to select a name here. For me, it would be just MOOC because that's what we are doing today. And you see that one here is grayed out. It's like you can use a template. So whenever you are creating the first time a workspace on a database, so you see here it's pretty new. Then you have the option here to use an existing repository. This is if you connect to an already existing repository, please have to check there. Otherwise, you would just remove what's on the database. Okay. So I will uncheck that because I want to create a new one. And as a workspace template, I just put in the check and I import the standard TC, which is about the, um, the standard modules which we provide you and they are pretty helpful and we have created them for you to to enable you with some stuff which would be pretty high effort to create on your own okay, you can select here a different subset too if you have proven one from your administrator but as said this is usually only picked if you are creating a new workspace on a non-existing repository already. In the case your administrator has already set everything up, you won't have here any templates and you don't have to check in here. Okay, so let's go into it. You're now seeing it's creating the repository. It succeeded. It's creating all of the tables in there and it's importing the subset and now it's done. It will be closed automatically in a few seconds or you just close it there. And here you have already the login. For default, the username is admin and the password is just empty. So this is something which is provided by us, uh, but don't take too much time to invest into that. We will later see on within the user management what you can change and that you can put in a password for the admin user too. And you can have different users there. You can have um, 
a single sign-on already and you can have a user group within the single sign-on for the different users you want to have to work with Tosca. So, so this is totally possible. Um, only thing I want to mention is if you're connecting um, the single sign-on with Tosca, you first have to update and then all the users are within Tosca and then you can use them. All right. If this is set up upfront, taking the workspace, you should be good at all. Okay, um, we're later talking a little bit about what does it mean to have a common repository. Um, but for the moment, we will start over with the few you have in here. Um, so. This is the standard for you. On the left hand side you have just a tree for navigation and on the right hand side you have your working. So if I just open up here that's everything imported from the standard subset. Don't mind if you don't have the same in here. This is now the usual work view uh, you have. So here you have for example a test case and a test step and here you just navigate between the different ones. You can navigate here too, that shouldn't be an issue. but Working should be only done in the right hand side. Usually the people start working on the left hand side because they are kind of used to it. Stop it as soon as you notice it and just switch back to working in that window here. All right, so you see here that here you can type and here you can do everything you want to. Here it is clear if you click on top here, you just rename it. If you're here mistakenly um, double clicking, you are in kind of a working mode and you don't know um, to switch back and forth. So that would be easier to work in the right section, not in the left one. Just keep that in mind. You have here different tabs on the top. So um, this would be properties. So this is more the technical section. Um, it's mostly used um, within the modules. There you have real technical information about modules and controls and so on. You can change things here, make them generic and so on. For the test cases section, it's not so important. Um, I will just close that down again. You have here the, the details, which is just the, the view where you work. That's the one we see. And we have um, control flow diagram, which is just the way through your test case. So that will change. For example, if you have a while, you get a, a loop in here, or an if, then you just go away. All right. And on some points, you also have task configuration. Task configuration is an hierarchical thing, so you just create them on one top and they, they are getting inherited below there. Okay, so this is just an example here and you can put in whatever you want to. The, the most prominent example would be the, the browser test configuration, which just puts in the different name of the browsers. We, we support, for example, Internet Explorer, Chrome and Firefox. And you just switch the value back and forth to which browser you want to have your test cases run with. Okay. Um, it is possible if I just pick here another tab, the, the modules, for example, you see on the bottom line there are the different folders, the different, um, the different sections from Tosca. You can just pick one folder, move it up there, then you see, all right, it gets our own window. And with the own window, you can move it wherever you want to. And you get this little cross here in the middle. The cross is pretty helpful if you have bigger monitors and if you're working. So for example, um, if you are creating test cases, I would recommend to have the modules on the right hand side and the test cases on the left hand side. The reason for that is if, I mean, you can also do it on, on the top, the, the test cases and on the bottom, the modules. This really depends on how you like to work. So this would be on the right hand side or you just give it on, on the bottom. Um, the, the reason why I want to go for this workflow and why I think it's easier to work with it, it's just if you're creating test cases, you just pick up here the modules, then you move it to a test case, release it there. And, and this is the way easier way to work. So from right to left hand side, but I'm kind of used to it. Um, it would be also to have the test case design here on the right hand side because those are the things if you're working with templates you want to connect for example the test data to your test case and you can here easily drag from right to the left so it's kind of 
the same thing as with the modules you can do with test case design. I would also have, for example, the executions on the right hand side because then you link the test cases to the execution list um, for requirements that don't mind too much because they are usually set up for just once. Um, as you have seen, maybe the, those tabs are changing on every item you are. So um, the, the whole GUI is responsive and changes to the to the different items you select in here. So it, for example, if I go here on the, on the test tab, you see the test configuration is missing. And here it is because it doesn't make sense to have a test configuration down there. Okay, next thing I want to show you is here the top menu bar. I think the first here is pretty much like in every other application, it's kind of Windows-like. So you have here the save, the go back, and you can go back um, in the navigation too. And here the ribbon also changes depending on where you are. So for example, now I've selected the test cases. So here is the test cases tab. If I move here to the test case design, it's moving here to the test case design tab. So this one really changes whatever you select there. Um, basic functionality would be here for the project. You can see um, that you have here different informations. For example, here on the, on the info tab, you see um, you see the, the overall things about your workspace, about your database. Um, you can go into the options and the settings. You see information about Tosca, accounts, license, and you can close down the workspace. It's not necessary to close it down there. You can go for the X on the right top too. Okay, next would be the home tab. Um, what would be most important is here that the project root, if you just select it, you see this is your complete project. And here you, you have all your folders. So, so this, this would be here, the root would be the, the base of your database and everything is linked to that. So that's why I was saying um, the test configurations are here hierarchical. For example, you would create here the test configuration on top and every other folder down there and every object gets just the test configuration there. You can leave it empty and just fill it wherever you need it. I link back to the, to the browser example. Okay, if you're wondering now why do we have those green bars here on the left? Okay, you just see them within the navigation tree on the left hand side. There are different colors in here. For example, it could be the green one, which means I have checked it out. I have checked it out here at the moment because I just created it. So I created that and no one else can see it because everyone which would connect now to the database, so if you're a different user, you won't see anything and for you it would look like like the database is empty because we haven't checked in so this are the possible um, these are the things which you have to keep in mind for multi-user repositories you have here the green light which means it's checked out for you you have a red light which means it's checked out from someone else and you have here in the middle the, the buttons where you where you can work with the multi-user repository. So I will first explain the buttons, then I will go back to the different coloring and what does it mean. Okay, um, update all should be performed on every start of the workspace. It's just like getting the new information from the common repository and have it on your local version. So it's not a complete dump of the database. Don't mind about your um, about the size of it. It's just that you get the newer information and for example the one which your colleague checked in yesterday in the evening. Okay, check in all would be just release every object you have manipulated locally to the common repository and save it on the database. Make it available for all of the others which are working with Tosca. Okay, I will just do that right for the moment. I will put in the check-in all. It will take a few moments because it's pretty new. You see down below here what, what um, Tosca is doing. It just takes a while because it's pretty much of data and it's a newly created workspace. So all the tables, all the files, all the, um, all the objects have to be put into the database. 
You see now it's a little bit grayish here. You don't have the green bar on the left hand side. So this would be the initial state if you just go to something. I will now pick the test cases and I pick here the standard modules example. Then I would check out the tree. If, I, if you see here on the right click, you will see you have to check out the tree there. I will explain that menu here in a minute. Okay, I just go to that folder, then I go for the checkout tree. As you can see now here in the navigation, it's green already. So um, this now is kind of locked for me only. Why do I have here two different types, the checkout and the checkout tree? Tree means the object I selected and every object below, as long as it's not checked out by someone else. And the checkout is just about this object. For the check-in, you only have to check in all because it doesn't make sense to have just um, a subset of things checked in. All right. So here you see I have now checked out the standard modules example and every folder below there. Okay. That means if I'm working with a colleague and I check out a tree, everything below there is locked for this guy. He will see here, instead of the green, a red one. And if you hover up with the mouse, you see uh, you see who has checked that out. And you can also select here, right click, and then see checkout details. And then you see which user has checked it out and on which machine. Okay, so, so that would be later on if you have something which you need and you can't access it, you can ask the guys there. So. If it's red here, you see just the last standing from the from the database before the checkout happened. So it's not the latest version of it. And you can only read it. You can't write on it. So um, let's pick the modules as example. If they are checked out, you can drag and drop the modules into your test case and you can have the test cases run so you can work with the modules but you can change, for example, properties within the modules. That's not possible. Okay, so that would be the difference here. The, the one is just the read writes and the other one is read and write writes. Okay, so we have here the green one, which means it's mine. We have the red one, which means it's someone else's and it's locked for me. And then we have the gray one, which means it's not within the synchronization. So what you can do is you can um, put things out of the synchronization. So it's here to exclude tree from synchronization. And for the moment you don't see here any difference. And because you have already loaded the data in there, but it's kind of grayish and the bar here would be would be empty if you are a different user and it's for a, and it's excluded from the tree and you really can't access it then you can you, you see it here gray there are no objects below it and then you can just right click it and say um, include all necessary items then they will be picked from from the database and then they will be reloaded in here this makes sense, for example, in big projects or if you just have uh, um, different applications and the, the one guy from application A don't want to see something from application B and the repository is pretty big and it's maybe getting slow to some point, then you can just exclude that part and then you don't need to load that. So it's maybe saving you some time while creating stuff. Okay, so... That would be the things about the multi-user repository for the moment. Um, and we should continue now with the navigation here. So if I go to a test tip again, and I will just move the bar here to the right, then you see you have here within the working window different columns too. So you have the name, the value, the action mode, data type, and work state. Um, on different levels, you have different columns here. 
and there are way more columns so for example you can go for the column chooser and then you see here there, there are way more so for example for the test cases you will need the, the condition column for example then you can just drag and drop them here from the column chooser here into the bar or you just double click them and then they are arranged at the, at the end okay you can remove them by just dragging them out um, of the top bar and then they will kind of disappear you can move them to, to, to in size to whatever size you want to or you double click them and then they have a fit as, for the size as they want to um, there's also the possibility to define columns on your own so maybe for, for something later you want to have here um, a gyro state for example then you can create one on the root for an object and then you have in here the column and then you enter the data you want to manually okay for the context menu it's pretty much the same so um, if you see here there are not many options but if I go now he back again here and check out the whole tree you will see that there, there, there are more options here available um, and it's all also depending on which object you are doing the right click then you have here the, the mini toolbar on top which is usually the, the creating stuff the searching stuff deletion and some of the administrative functions I would say you have also here the three dots with another sub menu where you have another options for creating stuff and you have to check in and check out here so um, here in the context menu you have more options so this is more about functions and not about objects top is more about the object and you see here different things which can be displayed you can also put in here here the report or run it in scratchbook which is maybe the most used function here you have here the excluding stuff which i, I showed before you have some modification stuff and so many different things here you can also export a subset. We, we talked about the, um, a subset at the beginning when we were talking about the, the database and the template which you create there. I was already mentioning the subset. So subset is just a part of your Tosca project which you want to export or to import. Here you can just export the subset. So that would be just, I will take here that object I selected plus the tree below there and just move that to a file and store it locally and maybe on another computer or maybe it's just a backup and later on I want to import it then I can just go um, to um, to a gray folder I will show you that later on and there you can import the subset okay so it's just like moving data out of your common repository and move it back in later on maybe for saving reasons maybe for sharing reasons you will find a reason for it okay then let's move to folder structure if we, if we are just talking about it right at the moment i will just check out here the root and i will show you um show you a little bit the different sections and folders from Tosca and then I will show you a little bit of best practice on how we recommend to set it up to some point or how I experienced that it would make sense for most of the customers. So here we have the configurations folder which is just about technical configurations for example test data service flood or different endpoints. Um, I think for the moment that's too much but we have the executions where you have the um, execution lists in there you, we have the issue section this is um, if you find errors you can put it in there and you can link them for gyro to example you have here the modules you have in the reporting so we provide you with some standard reporting and there is an extended reporting too so you can you can um, import it here and then you have the, the reporting um, on every object you want to report from we have the requirements section, test case design and test cases. So requirements would be just um, what function of my product do I prioritize and where do I want to test. Test case design would be about the data within the test case and the template. And test cases would be templates and test cases and so on. So everything you want to run later on. 
and test planning would be organizational and administrative. Just the walkthrough. There is another folder which you can see right here at the moment. It would be here the component folder. I also recommend to, to um, work with the shortcuts. You see this always in, in the in the in the menu down there. You see, for example, here for create component folder, it's con uh, control N, control C to just create that one. So I just click it here and you see now there's a component folder. Um, I will in future try to use some of the shortcuts. If, if I'm not sure, I will go through the context menu and then I will show you where you have to click for. But for example, if you're going to a straightforward structure here, we'll just name that one here projects because that's what you usually have. And you see already here the sorting is done. So folders are kind of sorted in a way like you define them. So you can put in here a number, for example, and then you can have them structured already here. Um, to some points, Tosca just um, is doing an alphabetical sorting, but on the other points, it, it would just leave you free as it, are, as, as it is. Sorry for that. So we are creating here two component folders. The one would be projects, the, the other one would be playground. You can name them, name them um, from numbering wise as you wish. I just put in here playground and in front of it, I will put in 01 just to have those two folders together. Um, you can rename the other folders down here too and create your own structure. Um, usually I put the playground a little bit more in the back and the other folders more on top and I will exclude some of those folders in bigger project and I will explain some of those stuff right now to you. But in the end, you have to work with the structure and you will have to um, will have to find your way working with Tosca. Okay, so on the playground, I think that's the easiest one. Here you just put in, you would put in um, a folder for every user. So for me, it would be Max. And then I would just put in here my test cases, my test case design, for example, and maybe my execution lists whatever, I don't know. It's just like a playground. Here you can try out whatever you want to, just give it a try here, and then you can move it to, to the project if it's working. So um, a good example, in my case, I always struggling with the task hill, um, where I don't know what variables I have to pick, so I usually create here a test case in it, just try out the task hill in there, and then if it works, I just move it to the projects folder. Okay, for the project folder, you would have here the separated dedicated projects. So this is where your test cases are, which will be run later on. And structuring wise, it makes totally sense to have here, for example, for every application, different one. So you can have your SCP in here, you can have your web in here. Maybe you have another SCP, but it's HR and you can have here in your Salesforce or whatever application comes into your mind, you would have here a different project. It could be project-wise, it could be department-wise. It's just like you want to structure it there. But here you can have a pretty awesome separation. It would be also possible to say, okay, SAP, we can put in here HR and there would be another folder with SAP with this kind of, for example, SAP HANA. So that would be the different options. And you, as you have seen now, you can just drag and drop those stuff into each other. That would be the easiest way to work with Tosca, just by drag and dropping stuff. Um, if you have it here, I always recommend to have following folders in there. You should always have the test case design folder in there. You should always have the test cases folder there and the execution list folder. So these would be at least the folders you should have there. So test case design about the data, the test cases where you have the, the kind of module based scripts there and the execution lists where you have just a list of the different test cases. The execution lists should later be linked to the main execution list folder. So as you see, what I want to create here is a different view for different people. And for that one, I just create execution list, for example, in your project. 
because in your project you may have different execution lists. You have one for just a subset of different test cases, maybe just one for one part, or you have some regression or smoke tests or whatever. But in the end, you will have a global execution. So you will have here an execution list, for example, and within the execution list, um, you um, could have, for example, your whole regression about all your products. So you, you will link here an execution list from SAP HANA to the regression, which covers all of the regression SAP HANA test cases. You will do the same for SAP HR, for web, for Salesforce, and so on, that they are here connected, but you just maintain them here in SAP HANA, but they are picked in the regression set too. Reason for this is the requirement section. Because um, in the requirement section, you also create with the requirement set just a few about, uh, about a different project or um, a different department. So it's always, always depending on the person who sees the requirement set what he wants to see. So you can create a requirement set just on your application. For example, that would be here in the SAP HANA project folder. Here you would just create a requirement about it. So you have um, not going to add into any detail about SAP HANA. You would have for a typical application, you maybe have the login and the user and whatever, and some print or order creation or, or so as a require as a requirement during your requirement set and that's really important to that application if you're going um, if you are kind of a test manager maybe for all of your products you would create here in the main folder a requirement a requirement set which is just containing your different application because on that level you're not interested if in your application A, the login fails or the print report fails. You're just interested how your application is working within the whole system. So if you're kind of the global test manager, you have in here a requirement set and you see, for example, um, in my Salesforce, there are 50% red. You don't know what, you don't know why, there are 50% red. So what would you do? You would go to Salesforce and ask the test manager for Salesforce, hey, I've seen um, you have 50% red in there. Just fix it. Where's the problem? Do, do something on it. Okay, then the guy from Salesforce can look into his requirement set and here he sees where the actual problem is. So for example, here um, the, the whole the whole structuring of the data is not working and therefore um, nearly all of the test cases are gone red. So, so requirements are for different views and for different views you should have different folders and for different folders you, you, you see how you can create that here within Tosca. Okay, um, I left one folder here and it, there is a reason for it. The folder I left was the modules one. Um, I usually recommend if the if the project isn't too big to have everything within the within one modules folder and have it centralized on the top level. So here I would have the standard modules and here I would create more folders. So for example, for the SAP and the Salesforce. and so on. Reason why I want to have them centralized and I don't want to have them in the playground too is just on the one hand the maintenance so you then have just one all modules centralized and just can maintain them from that point. The second point is that your portfolio isn't getting too defragment, uh, too fragmented too fragmented and you, you just have the one folder where you, where you have to look for any modules you have there. Because if you just um, create your modules in the playground with your test cases and you link the test cases later on in your projects and someone is cleaning up the playground, which I recommend, highly recommend to do this to um, a certain amount of time, um, you 
we lose the connection between the test step and the module and then your test case will fail and you don't know where the module or where you can create the module in some cases. Therefore, I recommend to have them centralized stored. So the modules are uh, centralized and the other folders, for example, requirements you can have for, for every level you want to have them. Then you have here the issues. I will leave this, this folder centralized too. Um, but for those two here, I'm not so sure if you want to see them here all the time. Maybe it makes sense to have some test cases which are overall for the whole Tosca project. Maybe you have some test case design, but usually you don't have to. You have those folders within your project or you have them within your playground or you have different folders where you store them. So you have them still here. You maybe put them to a number, but you maybe don't want to have everyone seen them. So this is the linkage to, um, to user management and user management in Tosca works following. You have here the owning and the viewing group. On every folder so now it's kind of everyone um, all users inherited so coming from the root here owns an object and for the viewing group no group is assigned so every group kind of owns the viewing stuff um, so if you check out here the folder because then you have the right access on it then you can change this stuff here and as you see you have here a drop down with the different groups which you can define. We will go into the, the user management in a second. And for example, you can put in here the viewing group, you can say only admin, and then a user which logs in doesn't see the folder here at all. So that would be the easiest way, for example, if the guys here from SAP HANA shouldn't see the SAP HR stuff because it's kind of data sensitive, then you just go to the SAP HR stuff, select here, the SAP group we will see that in a minute and then it will be masks for everyone. Um, to work with the user management you go here on the root and then you have here the bot tab which is the user management. Um, you have here already the admin user and you have here kind of the all users thing. You can add here another user for example that this would be my HR guy because he um, is working with the HR stuff and he's a, a typical user. You can also create another group. For example, these are my, this is my HR group because they are sensitive and then I just move the user here to the group and it's added here. Um, here's just, if, if it's an enabled user, you can disable users and the set result allowed means if you can right click on execution list and say set result manually. That's something which you may want to disable for some some of the tests. Don't mind too much about the level. The level is just if you see more or less options in there. More important is if he's an admin or if he's just in a different group. Um, if I've now created that here, um, I can also set here the password. That's something I mentioned at, um, at the beginning. I can just set here password and then I can enter a password and I need to confirm it. And if that's fine, now the user has a password. And whenever time he logs into it, he, was, um, he needs to enter the password at the beginning. You can also set one for the admin user. So that's done here. So if we are now switching back here to, to our HR, and I put in here the HR group and also for viewing, so it's only HR who can see this and only HR who can work with it. And here we only have the user HR guy which can access that. For the other one, it will look like, like the folder is removed. So it would be only the SAP HANA folder in there and nothing else. So for here, we just would have the viewing group admins and for test case, we would have done that too so that the, the typical users don't see that and don't get confused by it. They should work within the project things and with their own project.
Um, we do not recommend if you don't have a perfect reason for it to just lock everything down. So it shouldn't be that no one can see something. Reason for that is again reusability and maintenance. So you want to have things shared and you don't want to have duplicated things in there. You don't want to um, fill your repository with waste because everyone is doing his own task, for example, and you have them multiple times in there for every project, maybe for every type of test cases and so on. It doesn't make sense at all to just leave that and really think about if you lock something down, why you do that and what's the reason behind it. I think usually the, the most valid is about sensitive data. I think the others are not that necessary to lock them down. All right, guys, I think that's it for the moment. That's it for the MOOC. I consumed already my time slot. Um, there are many, many more things to, to see within Tosker. It's about here, for example, properties definition, few tools and so on, the complete API testing. So there are many things which you can do with present this Tosker right away. It's also about the buttons down there and what does it mean if it's underlined and so on. So there are many, many things you need to know. It's not enough for this hour. So um, I think we just stop in here. If you want to have further information, further things, I would recommend to do the AS1 and the AS2 course that they will lead you to more. You can ask the support guys, you can check the support homepage and so on. There are explanations for most of the things too. And there's also a Tosca community where you can ask questions and get answers pretty pretty fast. Um, I now want to switch to, to the Q&A and let's see if there are any questions already. All right, thank you. Now let's get over to the question and answer section. So I have a few questions here with me. The first one is, I have many controls in my module. But when I turn it into a test case, I don't see all of them, just some. Why does this happen and what should I do? Oh, that, that's a pretty good question. I'm switching now back here to Tosker and I can show it to you. Um, I mean, usually it's always the same thing if there's data hidden. It's just an option there which enables a good re reading. And I just demo it here with the DB Expert module, which is a standard module and proven by us. So you would have here the different options in. So so that would be all the options you can you can you can put into all the controls you have in here. And if I'm now going here to to my folder where I have just an empty test case, I can just bring in the module in there. And if you um, if I open that up, you see here here are the different options. So that's what I see here on the right hand side. But if you're going here to view and you have enabled here the hide do nothing, it will just shows you everything which is filled. So now it looks in the test case section like there is only one thing filled. And if you disable it, you can see whatever you can fill in there. So I think that's usually the problem in here and I hope the question is answered like that. Um, the second question is, is it possible to have more structure in a user management, for example, a user group inside a user group. So I can answer this question for you. The short, the short answer is yes. But for more information, please check out our MOOC about the ideal Tresentis test portfolio in the year 2017. Yeah, I think it was featured by Alexander Ertl and it gave, gave you um, a pretty good insight into, into the user management and how to structure those things. Maybe maybe some things from, from me are there as well. Maybe Alex is doing things other than me. All right. Um, and the third question is, is exporting subset the recommended way of backing up data in Tosca? Um, that's also a pretty good question. Um, it's not the recommended way. I mean, you should go for multiple backups, to be honest. You should start off with um, the typical database backup so you can roll back whenever whenever you have any issues, but I think the database backup is nothing you want to hear now. Um, it's possible to do um, 
the backup here you can also um, do the export subset here on the root so that would be possible to just um, export here the subset and like um, run it as a backup um, you can also trigger the function out of Tosca here so um, if you're going to, to the to here on the top to project um, and in the info section you have here the option to, to back up your currently used common repository. Um, it's also possible to um, run this in TC shell which um, is just the, the command line view of Tosca and then you can have like an automated script running in the night and doing the backup for you and just store it somewhere. And I think that would be the recommended way to do that. So you have automatic backups during the night and it's the, the version where you have no maintenance with. Well, thank you very much for your time and your knowledge. That was very helpful. And I hope you guys enjoy that. Thank you very much for joining us. Before we end this session, I would like to remind you guys of our upcoming MOOC, which will be about mobile testing. The session will be on November 28th of 2018. As always, we will have two sessions to cover different time zones. Also, please complete the feedback at the end of this session. Last but not least, if you have any further question or inquiry not covered in this MOOC, please contact our support or training department as well as check out the knowledge base at support.tricentis.com. We can also be reached on social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Thank you for tuning in and we hope to see you next time.